singing AC. <laughs> Do you ever lose your voice? You, which voice? Like just my normal voice? Yeah. Welcome to Lovers and Other Strangers with Robert Brisky, your late night. Okay, I, I I don't know. If you keep that up, we're going to have to stop and start over. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let, let's just let's just. I'll get, get into- more serious. I'll put my spectacles on. <laughs> okay. Okay, now we're serious because you've got your spectacles on. Okay, sounds good. Well, we ranted last time about FACs. You're and- not with FAC yet. You know me. Right. And just, okay, in case people weren't watching, it's... Uh, Franchise Advisory Council, they got to go back and watch last week's rant to get more clarity. But we talked about Franchise Advisory Councils and we we got a little bit um, almost into selection process and all that. So I thought maybe we should start or yeah. like talk about those things. Talk about that. Tell me who are the, the best people or the right people, the right fit to put on an FAC. Ooh, okay. So there's a lot of different things we can think. I might miss some of them, but I'm going to give you a few um, that come to mind when you ask that. So there's, because what, first of all, we really want to get a good cross section. Like you don't want to have people might think, oh, let's get the top performers because top performers will have really good answers because they're listening, they're smart, whatever it is that me that's making them a top performer. Your natural inclination might be, let's just put top performers on. And we also don't want debate and we don't want like we don't want tension and all this. Well, that's actually the opposite. We want a little bit of tension is good, debate, you know, that's what often creates like that's where the you know, the, the, there's passion and the good ideas can come out of that. So it is important to have a good cross section. So the way I, I like to think about it is you want to have, think of the different franchisees in your system, the types of franchisees, and think about how can we have representation for all of them? So for example, we might want to have, um, well, we want to have different regions, right? Like if you're across North America or US or Canada, whatever, you'd want some people from different regions so that you're not just representing maybe the busiest region, right? Like maybe one of your more saturated markets and maybe a new market. So people in the newer market can have representation. Um, Yes, we might want a high performer on there, but we might also want a middle performer on there who wants to get to be a high performer. And it might have ideas or or things that can come up that will be helpful for the FAC to be aware of because we want to rise because a rising tide lifts all ships, right? And the FAC generally knows that. Um, Another one you might want to think about is a multi-unit operator. Um, If you've got any multi-unit operators, so that's representing those people. Um, There's a debate about how new, that a lot of franchisors will say like, oh, we don't want anybody too new on there because they don't really know yet. Plus they need to get their business up and running. Um, they might get, you know, distracted by some of the things that they think that they should do that are for when you get further on. Um, and they also might slow things down because they're asking a lot of questions and, and, you know, needing to get educated, but on the flip side, you know, super new, fresh perspective. So it is, it is something to think about and maybe you've got somebody that's new, but, but maybe more sophisticated and more mature, um, sort of EQ that can understand that, okay, like this is a privilege that I'm here. Um, so those are some things. And one of the probably most important things is, in my opinion, is that the person that the people on the council understand that this isn't about their business. It's about the the whole. So when, you know, advisory councils, people will start to see that, like, oh, that person's always looking out for their own interest. That's why they're on this council. And it's very self-serving. That's a problem. So it, it's not always easy to to vet that, but you can usually tell by the way a franchisee acts in general, if they think about the greater good and the bigger picture, or if they're always worried about just their own location. So I don't know. Did I miss anything? Do you think I got a, a few? Oh, I think there? I think it's good. I I'm, I was mainly he- hoping to hear about psychographic uh, differences, right? Um, you know, so like you said, geographic, there's, you know, you want somebody in rural as well as urban areas from the East Coast for the West Coast, the thing, different things impact businesses, weather, you know, time of year, time zones, holidays, whatever, right. But also psychographic is great. You know, if you are a business that typically caters to children, you'd want somebody that has children as well as somebody who doesn't have children. So you can get the, the opinion of how different people will view different types of ads or changes or whatever it is, right. Some people who 
outgoing, non-outgoing. You want that that really good cross section, right? Like the yeah. Although non-outgoing, like I've heard stories of if somebody's too quiet and introverted, then they're really just wasting a seat. So right. I should mean outgoing in their personal life. Like maybe somebody does skydiving and rock climbing and all that sort of stuff. While somebody, <laughs> it's like all the application here. Here, do you do anything like skydiving? Um, <laughs> but I, I think the point the, the point is is the cross section, right? I think we yep. hit that. That's so the, how do you nominate these people then? Like, how do you select them? How do they get on? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so there's, I've seen a number of different ways it's done. Um, everything, well, I, everything from even when I was in, uh, at m M&M franchise, this, the franchise system, I don't know why I said it like that, but, um, when we, there were about like 350, 400 franchisees, 500 at the time, almost 500, um, like throughout the years. And our system was the, I think because it was big enough, you could no, you could have franchisees nominate people, or you could you could self nominate if you thought like I'd like to be on the council. You can put your name forward, and then there would be an election. Um, in some cases, there, there's the sometimes the if the the franchise is big enough, you can have the franchisees nominate, and then the and then the home office team might do the final selection from those nominations, like the election. Um, in some cases, they could do both. Um, or it could be flipped where the franchisor does the nomination so that they control who is put forward. And then the franchisees do the election of those people. So that, well, the point is, I mean, ideally you do want the franchisees bought into who's on that council so that they don't think, oh, you guys just picked who you wanted. And this is skewed and biased. Yeah, we we, we get our franchisees to just vote. You know, um, and then we just pick the the top whatever spots, three, five, ten, whatever um, that got votes. Sometimes somebody says, wow, I'm flattered everyone voted for me, but I don't want to be on the FAC. Yeah, the time, totally. You know? yeah. yeah, that actually happens a lot. Right. It's a, a matter of time. But people that the thing that's cool, just kind of side bonus tip for people that are figuring this out or maybe want to just think about this is that. The people that want to be on it do generally see it as a privilege. It came up at a, a roundtable something about what do people pay, what, at a roundtable recently? What do people pay for when it comes to the FAC? And most people don't compensate them other than maybe paying for their travel because the franchisee that's on the council gets you know gets to help make decisions, gets to be involved and, and do things. And it's there's usually a term, so it's not like they're they're on there for life. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know if you had it or like. Do you have any other questions about that or did I answer that? Well, I think I think you answered about the election process. You know, these days everyone is so like democracy heavy so that they're, they're yeah. always trying to figure out what's what's you look like you're about to say something. Well, I was going to say, I mean, as long as I mentioned, I just thought I should maybe expand on this. I mentioned that the it's it's risky when the franchise or picks the council because it looks like self-serving. Yeah. And so some, that, that'd be just one thing I want to really highlight is if you do if the franchisor decides to choose them, yeah, then you've got to be really ready to explain, right? Okay, so what happens if somebody's on the council already and they're not a fit then? So, like, assuming some time has gone by and you've tried to figure out what's going on and you you need to you need to do something at this point, you definitely can remove them. And so, um, it's not ideal, but if if it's clear that they're causing trouble, we owe it to the other people on the council, we owe it to the other franchisees that we are going to remove them from the council. So, we hopefully that doesn't happen. But if they're really dragging it down, there are ways that you can fix it. Wonderful. Okay. Well, let's wrap it up then. Okay. <laughs> Three. Two, one, one. go, go be awesome. awesome.